Japanese government leaders have come up with new plans for storing soil contaminated in the Fukushima nuclear accident. They cut the number of towns they want to host facilities under pressure from locals. Two cabinet ministers showed their new plans to the Fukushima prefectural governor and representatives of municipalities. We'll explain our plan to residents and do our best to gain their understanding. Government ministers revised their plans under pressure from regional officials. Still, some residents are worried because leaders have not come up with ways to help them rebuild their livelihoods. I won't brief local people until I get answers to all my questions and spoken with local leaders. The new facilities will hold contaminated soil until final disposal sites are ready. Ministers had planned to build them in three towns near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. They dropped one community because radiation levels there are relatively low and evacuees hope the to return. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says human error likely halted work at Reactor 4. Tokyo Electric Power Company has been transferring hundreds of fuel assemblies from the damaged reactor. They're being taken to a safer facility nearby. On Wednesday, a crane hoisting a container of fuel assemblies suddenly stopped. TEPCO officials say a worker mistakenly tried to operate the crane while the brake was on. The error set off an alarm and locked the crane's motor. TEPCO officials say they will take preventive measures and resume fuel transfer operations the soon. of the crippled Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan is found to have severely underestimated radiation exposure for almost 150 cleanup workers. The Fukushima Daiichi plant have been testing a water treatment system that can remove most radioactive substances from wastewater. But they've run into yet another problem with the system. Workers noticed that the contaminated water they were pumping into the main filtering component was cloudy, so they shut down one of the three water lines. They're trying to find out if anything is wrong with the equipment. Officials with the plant op plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, plan to use the filtering system to reduce the amount of contaminated water stored at the plant. About 400 tons of groundwater each day flows into damaged reactor buildings and becomes contaminated. But the filtering system has been hit by a series of troubles. Workers had just resumed operation of two lines on Tuesday after leaks and a filter malfunction. Many in Japan will spend the coming days reflecting on what happened three years ago. The disaster and its lingering impact killed more than 18,000 people. More than 2,600 others remain on the missing list. And around 270,000 residents are still living away from their homes. In the lead up to the anniversary next Tuesday, we're looking at how the disaster affected families, how survivors are getting over what they lost, and how they're preparing for what lies ahead. Now, one mammoth job has been to rebuild a vital industry. The coastal areas of Iwate, Miyagi, and Fukushima prefectures have been a hub for fisheries production in Japan. But the tsunami washed away infrastructure, causing $11.5 billion in damage. Government officials and locals almost had to start over. Now 68% of market facilities are back in operation and 78% of seafood processing facilities have been rebuilt and restarted. But many producers are facing a problem they didn't anticipate and they find themselves again searching for solutions. NHK World's Daisuke Asma explains. <laughs> Residents of Minami Sanliku have spent three years trying to bring their town back from the brink. Their main industry, fishing, is on the mend. Shop owners who lost everything to the tsunami worked together to open a temporary market. They are trying to attract customers and boost sales. A key industry in this coastal town is seafood processing. About 90% of the factories have already reopened. But many of the owners are facing difficulties. Zenyu Oikawa's family has been making Japanese fish cakes in Minami Sanriku 
for more than a hundred years. The tsunami washed away his plant. He opened a temporary one two years ago. But he can only operate it a few days a week because of a lack of workers. The factory's output is just 30% of its capacity. I'm very motivated because I want to help in the reconstruction. But I don't have enough workers. It is a really tough situation. And the situation is the same across the northeast. Many people left their towns after losing homes and jobs. The population of Minami Sanlik fell by more than 15 percent. Fewer residents mean job offers far exceed the number of workers available. Competition is fierce with companies taking part in the reconstruction effort. They pay 20 percent more than the seafood processing companies. Masayoshi Takahashi runs a factory that cleans and slices salmon for retailers. He lost two plants in 2011. He used loans and government subsidies to rebuild the facilities. Sales are recovering, so Takahashi wants to expand his business. But he can't because of the labor shortage. He took part in a local job fair, advertised at job centers, without any success. He decided to turn to foreign workers. These people will be our immediate asset. Takahashi used the government program to hire eight trainees from China. And he plans to fully automate his packaging line. It means a bigger financial burden. But he says he had no choice. It's no use complaining about the lack of workers when too few are available in the job market. As long as we have work to do, we have to move on, even if it means using machinery. Rebuilding the Northeast and reviving local economies go hand in hand. Business managers are trying to do their part. They believe their success will encourage residents to return to the town they left and inject life back into communities. Daisuke Azuma, NHK World, Minami Sanriku. Japanese have learned to keep plenty of food on hand for emergencies. Some changed their behavior after the disaster three years ago in northeastern Japan. Now researchers are packaging products with a longer shelf life. Shoppers often compare the shelf life of various food products. These two kinds of tofu look similar, but the one on the left has a longer shelf life. This corned beef will keep for three years. The expiry date of this mayonnaise was extended from seven to ten months. Sales for these products are flourishing. That might be because the products don't spoil for a long time and don't use artificial additives and preservatives. We've seen more of these in the past few years. Customers tend to choose products that have a later expiry date. How can the shelf life be extended without using preservatives? One of the biggest enemies of food preservation is oxygen. If it comes into contact with the oil in food, the food's quality deteriorates. Even food in regular plastic containers is not always protected as oxygen might eventually get through. Nowadays, products have new packaging technology that keeps oxygen out. The container on the left is a conventional one. The other, made with the new technology, is oxygen-proof. A special solution that reacts to oxygen is added and the lid is closed. As time passes, the contents of the regular container start turning blue, but in the other container, the color doesn't change.
This mayonnaise container has several layers to prevent oxygen from getting through. Even so, some could penetrate. So we added a wall that absorbs oxygen, making the container completely oxygen proof. The walls are between the plastic layers, so even if the oxygen gets through the container surface, it won't reach the food. Thanks to the innovation, mayonnaise in this type of container is preserved for three more months. This food company extended expiry dates through strict hygiene control. It produces potato salad and other delicatessen items. The usual shelf life would be two to three days, but this company's products last for a month if they're refrigerated. The key is the control of bacteria in the air. Any salad or delicatessen food that is exposed to bacteria during preparation might not keep for a long time. An air shower at the factory's entrance blows dust particles off the employees. The factory's hygiene matches that of a semiconductor firm. Every three hours, the machines are stopped and taken apart for thorough cleaning. The process takes 30 minutes. Because of the extreme reduction of bacteria, the company was able to sterilize its products in a lower temperature without sacrificing the distinctive flavor and texture of its homestyle dishes it extended their shelf life to a month last year revenue increased twenty percent over the previous year we want to pioneer the longer preservation of food that ensures the food's flavor and safety these technologies could lead to more food exports as the product stays fresh for a much longer time so people in other countries might soon be eating more Japanese delicacies. Other news tonight, the King 5 investigators learned that workers at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation have been rushed to the hospital. Susanna Frame is in eastern Washington with the details. I'm outside Catholic Hospital here in Richland where one Hanford worker perhaps two is inside getting medical treatment right now after inhaling toxic fumes. This is what happened today. I was in Richland doing an interview on this very topic about the bigger topic of employees getting exposed to noxious vapors and getting sick because of it. During that interview we got word from sources that right at that time three more employees were either going to the hospital here or being taken to the on-site medical facility at Hanford because of another such incident. This brings the total to 14 Hanford employees who all work for the same government contractor who have gotten sick and needed medical attention in just the last week. That'd be two last week, nine workers yesterday, then three more today. In those three separate incidents, the workers were all in different locations at Hanford. So this isn't just like one problem area where they're seeing a repeat problem. Uh, symptoms that the workers are experiencing include uh, bloody noses, coughing, difficulty breathing. And I do know that the two men who were exposed last week are still sick today and are receiving medical care. I put out calls to the Department of Energy and to the government contractor uh, who employs these workers and they haven't gotten back to me yet. Obviously uh, workers are concerned, feel there's a problem here and they want their employer and the Department of Energy to do something about it. In Richland, I'm Susanna Frame.